these slides aren't my own. I, I have retinkered them a little bit, um, but these are all released under Creative Commons from the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, and so again, I will be putting these uh, up into uh, our site. I'll also put a link to the original slide deck, um, which I believe is a, it's a share alike license at the moment. Um, so I just want to point out, if I'm a little bit rusty because I've only had a couple of hours to learn. <laughs> so okay, excuses aside, I'm, I'm, I'm making up excuses for a bad presentation before I start. Let's jump in. First half of this session is what is up in badges. Second half is some screen sharing, talking about what, how do they work in 2.5? What options do we have? So let's kick into the first slide. The question we became is, you know, what, how are we starting to motivate online education? Now, those who've, who've come to my course on dissecting a game theory course have heard about this, and those actually who've been talking about gamification have raised it a fair bit. Typical online education has been all about using the stick to drive people forward. It's all about do this or you're not competent. Do this or you will fail. Do this or you won't pass. Because online we've been struggling to, <coughs> to find mechanisms. Um, also, more importantly, we also want to have a point of recognition of things that you've learned, of things that you've done. And what happened in my Zilla group was like, they kind of thought, but well, something that you use to, to show off what you know is, is a badge. What, what if we actually use badges for learning? And, and this is the question that was asked and, and, and at the very beginning, where this idea of, of open badges come from. So when I talk about badges, they don't just want to talk about like a digital badge, a, a digital picture, but this idea of an open badge. But of course that leads to a question, you know, what is an open badge? Uh, what do I mean by a digital badge? Anybody can create a picture and stick it on a site. Anybody with a little bit of coding could have written a little thing, but we have a Moodle to award a picture to somebody for doing something. But the problem with that is it's limited to this system. An open badge is not just recognised but by one system, but recognised by many. It's not just an idea, it's a standard. So when we talk about badges, what, what's the idea of an open badge? Well, basically it's a visual representation. And so, you know, people's achievements or their competencies, their, their skills, their interests. I feel like a third year lecturer just sitting here reading a slide. I promise not to be quite that bad. The idea of a badge is to be able to give something for both the student and for the student to show others that represents a gaining or, or an attaining of a certain piece of knowledge. And again, the idea of a badge is something that you wear, something that you show, something that you have with pride. People often aren't forced to wear badges, they want to wear a badge. If anybody here has ever seen an office space, they want their 50 pieces of flair <laughs> to, to move forward. And so the idea of a badge is that yes, each of these can represent certain achievements. And the great thing is, they haven't tried to make it too formal a stand where it has to be for a certain type of thing. Anybody who is creating open badges can tie it to whatever standard they like. The whole idea is to give a student something that visually represents so they can then show others what they have learned. So basically what we're talking about here is we don't want to change existing law. I'm not saying you know the idea of Mozilla is not to change educational practice. You know, the idea we talk about you know game-based learning, that's a whole new you know, paradigm shift of, of changing courseware and how it works. Those of you who have been at iMOOC before, I know the site has a new skin, a new theme on it this year because of 2.5. But if you've been into our iMOOC last year, the year before, in fact, if you go back, this is our fourth year now, if you go back four years ago, your course spaces are still the same. To use badges, I didn't actually have to change my site. But I could augment it, I could add, I, well, I'm using the word on their slide, but I have to complement it by adding these elements of recognition. And recognition is a really important element. Um, I, I forgot to mention earlier that, of course, that humans, uh, as, as part of our uh, standard, uh, built in mechanisms, we want recognitions for things that we do. We want to be able to show others what we've learned. We want others to be aware of what we know. Um, part of that will come down by how you dress. Part of that will come down by if you're one of those people who actually hang your diploma on your wall in your office. It is your idea that appeals so they know about my background and my experience. The only thing is to complement those traditional practices rather than forcing you to have to change it and you can do it. And as I mentioned earlier, because badges can be used for anything that this facilitator wants to come up with, 
It means it can be both used for formal and informal learning pathways. Uh, inside MOOC, uh, iMOOC itself, I've been very keen to have some formal badges for things uh, for work achieved, the communications badge you achieved if you had done three posts in the forums. If you're wondering why you haven't got that badge, you haven't been talking in the forums yet. Um, and that was a little bit of a more formal mechanism. Um, others are incredibly informal. Uh, we have the Cataday badge, uh, which for those of you who wondered why only a couple of people have a Cataday badge, is because I was watching Austin Sinclair, who's the first session after the keynote, uh, it feels so, so long ago. And as he was talking, a cat just walked in front of the camera and just kind of made its presence felt. And I thought that was kind of funny, and next thing you knew, I invented a Cataday badge. And then another presenter had another cat problem. And then people started talking about cats. Next thing you knew, I think about 12 people now have cat day badges. It's a stupid thing. I know this site isn't necessary for learning, but I just highlight that that's something that was a little bit more informal. It was built to create interest. It was built as a level, uh, as a tool of pure engagement only, uh, rather than trying to drive a, a formal process. And to try and bring that back into, of course, the education standpoint, well, that's the same thing. You know, I can have formal recognition. You have achieved this diploma. You have reached this level of attainment or informal. Yes, you, you, you've completed that forum. Um, you've been engaging with peers. You've, uh, you, you, I talk about kids. You, you is one just for, for doing a good job. Uh, so again, the idea here is not to tie these to too formal um, a, a mechanism of delivery. It's just whatever the educator wants to recognise in the student. And then the student can choose what they wish to do with the batch. And stay with me because this is where it gets exciting. We talk about formal or informal. The other thing is the kind of things you can represent. They can represent hard and soft skills. Again, uh, these aren't my slides, but I really like what they try and do. The whole idea about badges is to represent attainment of a piece of knowledge, however big or small that might be. But more importantly, giving them something, giving them, I brought my props, giving them a badge, something that they can keep, keep hold of and show others. This ties in to digital uh, portfolio, something they can keep and show. And so the idea here is when we start talking about badges, and those of you who aren't aware of it yet, these things aren't necessarily tied to one site. These are things that you can take, you can collect, you can store, and you'll be able to show others using what is called the open badge standard. So I want to the Mahoodle one. Next year, I already promised to give you this, next year we're going to have Mahara as part of the iMOOC system so that people can reflect and start creating portfolios of their work and portfolios of what they've uh, been learning at the iMOOC. Next year we will have I'm, uh, uh, a Mahoodle set up and next year we will have badges, so stay tuned on that. So because they can be formally informed, because we can capture hard skills, soft skills, uh, individual outcomes, they can be used however and wherever. The idea behind it is to allow for innovation. Now, again, I know I'm putting the cart before the horse, and the reason I want to do it this way is it's kind of lead you down this path of how cool these things can become. But the reason I'm saying innovation is because these things are collectible, and, and I can show them to others in different systems. It means that individual organisations are being encouraged to innovate how they use badges, where they want to use them, how. Uh, are they easy to get? Are they going to be a collector's item, dare I say? Are they going to have high value? Are they going to have low value? The idea here is that because of the, the lack of restriction, they're really trying to push a level of innovation um, and for people to use it. And, and, and IMO, I think, is a fantastic example of that. When they came up with open badges, they didn't think that someone would create an online conference. And in that online conference, they're going to find ways of giving people badges to encourage them to talk to each other. That's the kind of innovation that we're talking about. Gareth, don't you spoil my story. I'm getting there. Shush. I'm telling off the student at the back of the classroom. Wait till I get there. So again, um, you know, they talk about, when we talk about the more formal learning process, you know, I've been talking about all this informal stuff making a big deal about it. Yes, it's also for the formal. Degrees, certifications, diplomas, things that currently come with a you know, a physical piece of paper. You know, here, here is my degree that I'm going to stick and mount and put on a wall. That's great. But we're in a world now that that piece of paper means very little because that piece of paper is not seen in my digital space. 
But I have a digital portfolio. I have a digital resume. I have a, a digital PLN. You know, many of you will have LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. You know, these are places when you apply for a job, that, that resume has so little impact now because yes, it tells me a bit about you, but then as an employer, I'm going to do this Google search. I want to see your digital experience. And so digital portfolio is becoming bigger. And so you also need a way of being able to represent these formal avenues of learning. In a way, however, that can be verified, in a way that can be controlled. Because I don't want anybody just going through and saying, oh, look, I've got a little badge maker at home. I've made this badge, but I've happened to put you know, Uni University of California uh, Masters in Education. Because if I just did that, it of course means nothing. So again, what we have here with our badges as a standard is that it can also be signed, they can be verified, and they can be uh, identified as being from a source. So again, they say because it's formal, informal, you know, because it's um, for, uh, for individual tasks, for, for huge assessments, because it's for um, things that are fun, things that, dare I say, aren't. The whole idea around these things, and the reason that they put all these slides together, explaining the different concepts of what they can be used for. Could we please note, and I love this about the slide deck. Uh, again, for those of you who are late, this actually isn't my slide deck. The reason I love this slide deck is just all the reason what we do with the badge first. We get the technicalities of what they are. Because this actually isn't about the technology. It's actually about what we're trying to achieve. And they're very keen to say it's not an either or. It's not this or that use. It's not for, for that kind of purpose or that kind of purpose. It's both an and. We really want to encourage people to be able to, or they, I should say, really want to encourage people to use these badges for anything they dream up um, and allow the students to be able to show them. All right, so let's all talk about you know, how that can be used. Well, how do we get there? How do I create a standard that can be given by people for all these different mechanisms, that can be verified, that can be recognised, that can be shown in different places? How do we get from that ideal to a, a point of delivery? Well, this is what we talk about with an open badge standard. What Open Badges are is an ecosystem and an infrastructure. The infrastructure is actually provided by a site called backpack.openbadges.org. We're going to come to that. And it also, so that I should say, is the, uh, an ecosystem behind it. And it comes with a universal standard. And I promise I'll try and speak as little geek as I can. But there is an API in the background that allows people to push and pull data around a, a universal meta tag link. It's, it's its own special type form of XML. Um, which actually allows it to be recognised by multiple systems. Because of this universal standard, again, you think about what universal means. A universal remote can be used with any TV. So those of you who have a universal remote, you no longer have eight remotes sitting on your table when you want to turn on your TV, your sound system, your, your, your cable box, your whatever it might be. You have one remote so you can then interoperate that with all of them. Well, the only of open badges to be an open standard, so it can be used between multiple sites, multiple systems, multiple areas of use. Um, what's really important as well is this shared infrastructure. So there actually is, is a, a common place, a commonality where we can store these for then pushing to and pulling from. And this is what's called openbadges.org. We're going to come to that in a couple of slides time. Um, <laughs> they do call it the open badge infrastructure. Uh, this is a, a very good geeky, peek, peeky image that says, oh hi, oh bye. Um, I don't claim any credit for that pun, I think it's absolutely awful, but this is what they were referring to by the open badge infrastructure, the work that goes behind it. So what is it? Well, let's start off at the top and work our way down. So different organisations can issue badges, any organisation. In fact, you know, I put like maybe it's an after school program, I'm doing some vocational education, um, online conferences, you know, people like us, you know, we're, we're going to be issuing badges for attendance, which is a formal one, for being a presenter, which is a formal one, and for having a cat, which is an informal one. You know, we've got things like government agencies, uh, already uh, the, the Smithsonian uh, are issuing badges uh, for people who have come and done certain courses with them. And by the way, this is just three examples, of also the universities, technical colleges, um, kung fu dojos, anybody. Badge issuers come up with a badge they want to deliver, and so what they do in the next level down to create badges, they can be collected by the individual. And that in itself is kind of cool. And already you all got excited. It's been fun watching 
people since the day one going nuts collecting all these badges and, and wanting to find more. It's, we've got competition in there, we've got passion in there, we've got a sense of exploration in there. And so in itself that serves a purpose. But if it just ends with the learner, it becomes a relatively limited use. It becomes just an engagement tool. So Open Badges is actually about extending past just getting to the learner. The learner, or the earner as I put it here, can store it in what's called the backpack. Now again, stay with me because we're going to be doing some demos here. Um, oh, thank you Richard. Uh, again, people jumping ahead on me. <laughs> Don't take offence to that. I'm happy to start sharing links and things. Please feel free to do so. Um, as you go through and collect these badges, they can be pushed using this universal standard, using this API. They can be pushed to the backpack. Now this is actually uh, at uh, what's called backpack.openbadges.org and this is part of what Mozilla are providing. Um, it's a centralised place that you can store your badges. It is a digital portfolio of skills that you have a, 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 and information that you have attained. Now where it is limited of course is its job is just to collect badges. So it's not going to be competing with your uh, Maharas or, or with your Pebble Pads because it's not about being a full digital portfolio. But it is a portfolio of collection of skills and abilities. What's well, great, so I've got a place I can store it. Well what can I do now that I've got a place where I'm storing it? Well now I've got the central place. Using this open standard I can now push these badges to various sites. So I can put it onto my personal website or maybe I have my own portfolio. You know, Mahara will have the ability to display open badges. I don't think it's there yet but I know they're working on it. Um, I can push badges to my social networking profile, you know, to, to my LinkedIn profile, to, to, to Facebook, places that I want to actually show people what my attained skills are. I can push them to my blog. Uh, again, Gareth, not yet. But I do know, I was reading an article just the other week that LinkedIn will be supporting open badges. Um, and again, so at the moment uh, Google Plus have done it as well. Uh, WordPress and Tumblr already have plugins written that you can add to your site. So if you actually have a WordPress blog or you keep a Tumblr, um, there currently is a plugin for, uh, for Backpack that also allow you to push your badges onto those sites. And of course job sites. Now again, it's hard for me to give examples and this is where I'm not as prepared as a proper speaker would have been. Um, I do know a couple of sites have. But because it's open standard, anybody who runs a website can easily tie in the open badge standard. Um, and again, <laughs> I'm following the chat at the same time. I'm going to be talking about how we use the, um, the standard. So again, people are going, oh, how do you do it? I'm going to be talking about how we're going to set it up and I'm going to show you how to do it in Moodle and how to push out. Uh, again, I'd love to say yes or no to Blogger Maureen. I don't know because I'm not as prepared a presenter as, as our first speaker would have been. But do keep an eye on it and, and or, or a quick Google search and hopefully you'll find an answer. But I do know currently WordPress and Tumblr are supported. As I said, and then we're hoping that job sites. I actually, you know, LinkedIn while being a social networking site, also I would put down the job site to a degree. But again, the idea is that hopefully we'll start seeing a pickup in, in some of the bigger, you know, job advertising sites. Where, you, where people create their digital resumes to pass this on. And the reason I just want to highlight this is what you're actually now seeing is this ecosystem that we're talking about. Because once I've gone through and had the ability to publish it, well this now actually ends in outcomes and results. Yes, by showing that I've got a standard of learning, by showing that I've achieved a certain thing, yes, this can end up going to jobs. By wanting to collect badges, by the sense of competition, by the sense of achievement that comes from it, it will go into new learning. Think about how many of you have been sourcing badges. We didn't tell you what badges were available. And why is King I talk about it to highlight this? You discovered. You went on this trip of discovery. Many of you have actually been talking in a forum, talking about how you got badges and what you were doing. You've been exploring things like the Facebook uh, group, the uh, Twitter area, because you want to expand not because of a personal want to, uh, to, to expand your personal growth, but because there was a batch involved in it. And so the part of this reward mechanism, yes, coming back to the game-based element means that hope is going to lead to new learning. And of course through that unlocking new opportunities for, for the learner. And so if we now look at this as a big picture, you know, issuers create them, they're endorsed, and it makes sense I talk more about the technology behind it. 
and then the earners have it and they can then choose where to display. What we now have is a true end-to-end, -end. and yes, it, 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 I love the use of the word carry. We now have an end-to-end -end ecosystem of badges. But this ecosystem, of course, comes with control. Because you know, anybody can create a picture. I know that any of you could right click, save your picture, and I'll look, now I've got a copy of the badge. I can tell people I achieved this if you did or didn't. The thing about the backpack is it also is a controlled ecosystem. Think of it, things like that, like the app store. You know, things are pushed to it, it's verified, and then goes out to the learner. And it can be rescinded from the learner. It can come with time constraints. It, it comes to the level of, of verification that actually gives these uh, badges a, a level of recognition that just a graphic would not. So, I've kind of alluded into it, so how does it work? Well, what happens is, the way it works with the API is that there is a, a sort of metadata. Now, you don't have to know code, but I just kind of want to show you, we're going to talk about the metadata here. What you're actually seeing here is, you know, who's received the badge, uh, what evidence was there of it, what does it have an expiry date, and if so, when does this badge expire, um, and what date was it issued. And when this information is pushed into open badges, they can keep it. And especially things like expiry dates. If you have a, a certification, like a first, a first aid certificate, it might only have 12 months um, in it, and then it will go away. So when you go through and build badges, uh, we can go through and pull and push that. Um, the badge itself, you know, what version of what? What is its name? You know, here's the iMovie 2013 attendee. There's the picture that it uses, a description of it, um, and then information about who it was issued by. You know, it was issued by the 2030 iMovie. Um, we call it the iMovie conference, and might have a different organisational name if need be. So what you're seeing here is what's called the meta um, that is then pushed using the API. Oh, there you go. Um, up to the open badge cloud, for them to be able to store this badge. Once it's there, well, this is where things get exciting. So, you know, so I, I don't want to get too techy. I know I actually want to show the Moodle stuff as well. But what happens at the top? How's the authentication and, and claiming work? So, so the issuer on their website, you know, or, you know they said, or education provider organisations or conferences like us, we create badges. Using the API and, and specific metadata, we can push these to a place called the, not to the backpack. And yes, stay with me, I promise we will show you that. Once it is there, what happens? Well, okay, it's stored there, it'll, it'll, uh, rec it'll identify the issuer, it'll confirm that issuer exists, it will go through and maintain, does this badge have a lifespan, and remove it if need be. Once in the backpack, well, from there, the learner takes control. Now, the backpack is mine, and I can modify it and change it. Again, I hate saying cup for horse. I've said it a couple of times, but I'm going to show you a demo in a second. But once it's in the backpack, then from there, the user can choose to push individual badges or collections of badges. I just want to stress that just because you've collected badges doesn't mean you have to share them all with the world either. The learner has control. This is why I love describing it as another form of digital portfolio. They choose what they want to display, what they're proud of, what they think a certain particular audience needs to see. And so again, using that same API and using that same metadata, that information can be pushed to websites that are built to recognise it. And so uh, Moodle is a site that's built to recognise. Not only can I push badges out, but yes, I can pull badges in to my Moodle site so that my educator can actually see that I have attained some of these skills in other areas. Think of the RPL, uh, recognise prior learning elements of that. I can actually go through and show my educator that now I actually have achieved this attainment from this recognised institution in my Moodle site or in my LinkedIn profile or on my Facebook page or you know, on a job site. And so the power of this is like a true badge, I can go through, stick it on me. I should have brought some sticky tape. There we go. Put a bullet in my head. Um, that's what it looks like right now. Let's just, uh, let's just pretend the badge is up top. Um, and I can now show those who I want to, these are skills that I have attained. And especially because the issue has been validated, it does have a strong element of, of recognition. And if it does, go through and, uh, and have an expiry date, that it will disappear, so people will know if it's valid or not. 
This ecosystem to me is what's so exciting about open badges. So, <laughs> hands on session. So what I'm going to do right now is just try and turn on screen sharing, bear with me for a second, and let's talk about how this works. So I'm just on a Mac, so uh, I have to uh, I am still here. Just give me a second. Okay, hopefully you should see the Moodle site appearing. Can you all see the Moodle site showing up? All right, fantastic. Well, let's have a quick look here at the Moodle site from Moodle's perspective. I want to show it to you first from a student's perspective if you haven't discovered this yet, and also from an admin's perspective if you haven't discovered it yet. So here I am logged in, you know, logged in as Julian Ridden. If you, I'm sure you guys are all semi moodly aware. If you click on your name, it will take you to places like your profile. Here is my profile. In my profile, I can see my badges. Now, for the sake of this presentation, I have been egocentric. I've awarded myself a whole bunch of badges, <laughs> including the We Don't Need No Badges badge, which if you haven't discovered it, it's hidden inside the uh, Coffee Break course. So do make sure you come by for Coffee Break and even there you can find some cool badges. These here are badges that I have attained from this site, from whatever formal or informal education process uh, that's responsible here. Now I want to highlight that, as many of you have seen, if you actually look at your profile, there they are. Also if you look at somebody else's profile, you can see the badges that they have earned. As individual students, you can hide, make them private. If you don't want people to see a certain badge that you have, you do have control over this. This is still your badge, your area to go through it and take them. And by the way, if you're seeing some badges there, it might give you some more ideas. How to get the photo magic badge. If anybody wants to answer how to get a photo magic badge, also please feel free to do so. So at the moment, we're seeing a system that is just contained into Moodle. How, how do we pack this a bit further? Well, because I'm in my profile, I just want to highlight that it's no longer called settings. If you haven't picked up, in 2.5, they've actually changed the word settings to administration. They thought it was a better use of the word. If you're using an old site, this is what you used to be called the settings block. I'm in my profile, so I can edit my profile, change password. These are things you've probably seen. Well, under my area here, I also have backpack settings. I know I haven't shown the backpack. Stay with me. But here I can put in the email address that I use with my backpack. Once I've typed this email address, it will connect to Mozilla. So let's take a look out for a second. It's great that I have a Moodle site, but I want to be able to take these badges and move them to a place I can share with others. How do I do that? You go to backpack, uh, I'll make sure you can see the address, that would help. Backpack.openbadges.org. This is a website, this is where the, which is the, I guess the central hub of the ecosystem. This is a place that you can go through and store all the badges that you've been receiving. Moodle is one of many sites now that can connect to the backpack. So if you haven't been here before, and in fact if you even want to do it while I'm talking, feel free. At backpack.badges.org, anybody can create a free account. And inside that account, you'll see a collection of all the badges that you have earned. Now, I actually have badges from multiple sites. Oh. Let me just log back in here. So let's go through and show up everything. So here are a whole bunch of badges, and please note that some are from iMood, some are from other sites. I've been doing a whole bunch of badge earning uh, as I was preparing for this presentation. Now, oh, I'm a presenter, I've forgotten what that badge was about. Clicking on it, you can see here, it came from the International IMOOC 2013, that's the address. Um, but because I was an IMOOC presenter, there's a description and it lists to the criteria and evidence of what was needed 
to get that. Oh, criteria. Clicking on that will actually take me in a new tab. Takes me to the Moodle site where it actually says, oh yes, this one here, the criteria was awarded to you by a teacher. And again, this will make sense as I keep continuing and show how badges can be issued. But the great thing is that the ecosystem hooks all this information together so that you'll always know what this badge is, where it came from, how long it will last. And of course, if I don't want to keep it anymore, I can choose to remove it because this is my backpack. So having set up this backpack, and I, again, I've, I've done this before because I'm an experienced presenter who apparently is organised. In my little settings, again, in your profile, back to my profile, under administration, you've got badges, backpack settings. Here is where you go through and enter your email address that you use for your badges. And through just that alone, it's able to go through and connect. Now, yes, there is a password verification. Use the API to do that, so it's not just going to blindly connect anybody. But once it's connected, things get exciting. So, okay, I've now typed in my backpack. How do I push things? You know, it's, it's portfolio. I'm very keen to stress the word portfolio because portfolio is student driven. It's not driven by the site. The site has given you the badge for whatever reason, but you are the student. You control what happens with it. Okay, so let me go back to my badges. My profile, my badges. I have earned a hardcore user badge. Now, this is a very exclusive badge. Not many people get the hardcore user badge. Again, I'll explain. Now, since you've come to this session, you get some background information. The hardcore badge is issued for special circumstances. Carrie was meant to be in surgery yesterday, but she put off her surgery so that she could come to an IMAT. Part of me says, thank you, well, I'm glad we inspire you, I'm glad the audience and presenters inspire you. The other part of me says, you're nuts. So, I gave you a badge for that. Um, there was another lady who, again, I apologise, I get the name on her, Shimmy, Simmy, I apologise, up to all this time, um, it had been a while, and she actually broke her arm the day before her presentation in two places. And, uh, and again, she issued the hardcore badge. And some of you I know, um, Teresa got one because I think she had like three hours sleep and 48 hours. The hardcore badge is a very hard badge to earn. So I'm proud that I have the hardcore badge, and I want to push this to my backpack. To push it to the backpack, if the Moodle site's been built to work with it, you can click on the button here that says Add to Backpack. Now, if your Moodle does not have access to connect to this API, you know, it's still going to be a, a setting that your admin may or may not enable. The other option is, is that you can download it. And when you download it, it's not downloading the picture. It's actually downloading the badge, downloading all this, this meta that comes with it so that you can physically upload it into the backpack. Now, because I've connected iMoot to Open Badges, I'm going to publish it. So I'm going to go add to backpack. You're about to send one badge to your backpack. Hurrah! <laughs> I do like that. Not yes. Hurrah! It's confirming the badge. This is the criteria. This is what it's issued by. Am I happy with that? Yes, I'm happy. And as simple as that, that badge has now been pushed into my backpack. And as a student, you can go through and push any of them. If I have to go back to my backpack right now and just reload the badges screen, look, there it is. The hardcore user badge has appeared. So it really is a seamless process now to push them up there. Now, of course, after a while, you will end up with a mess of badges from various sites. Um, some of them are formal, some are informal. Some are things that you're very proud of, others are just kind of fun things that you've collected. So the next cool thing you can do with a backpack is create collections. A collection is a place you can go through and store badges. Now, whoops, I didn't mean to change the page. Sorry about that. Let's go back. Again, the interface here is very simple. To create uh, a new collection, actually I'm going to do a new one for a second, Create a new collection, um, I want a Thimble. Thimble's an application I've learned how to use. So I'm going to click and drag into this new collection box and give it a name. 
I now have a new collection. Scroll down there. So nice and easy. And then I can choose if this is something that is publicly viewable or not. And if it is publicly viewable, what's the address to get to it? So I can now put that address. Even if you're using sites that don't have the formal connection that I've been talking about, you can get URLs. Up the top here, you do have a share this on Twitter, Google or Facebook. If you want to go through and publish it out, if you want to go through and see how it's going to look, you can do that. And I'll come back to that in a second. Let's just go back to collections. You'll see here that I've actually created three collections. Now, I've been showing that I've got coding ability. I've been using a, 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 a website that actually allows me to collect badges. Oh, what are they for? I don't remember. Let's find out. So I want to find out about the Div Master badge. Oh, it's a new skill badge for editing and adding more div containers. Ah, oh, I've learned how to use div containers. That's cool. Now I remember. And so what I did was I created a container and I've made it public of all the coding badges. And as I go through and collect more badges from sites um, such as um, Code Academy and others that are selling these open badges, I'm going to store them here so that when I want to go to a little community and say I'm building plugins, I can also verify by also saying, and look, these are the skills that I've been recognised as having had. Wait a second, I'll just take another leap. I want to show to the Moodle community, Moodle.org, that I have these skills. Well, the good news is, is that we can do that. In my settings, under badges, backpack settings, once you're connected to the backpack, you can then choose which of the public containers you want to bring in. There's my coding badges, there's my iMoot, there's apps I have. Because I'm now connected, I want my profile to also bring in my coding badges. Which means if I now go back to my badges page, not only is it showing everybody here the ones I've earned from this site, but if I scroll down, it's showing badges I've earned from other locations. And these can all be verified by my educator, by my manager, by my facilitator. Um, can, does Middleton have it? Not until I go to 2.5. <laughs> so, and, and I'm not Martin, so I can't speak for when that will or won't happen. But once you're on 2.5, absolutely, this is, this is part of Moodle. This is what we can do now. And so my educator can go to my profile and say, oh, Julian's got the uh, Media Maker badge, uh, Super Styler badge. Oh, what does that mean? The educator clicks on it and it tells them it was issued by this site, it's this, it was issued for this, and the criteria for its awarding was this. This is core in 2.5. This is why I get so excited. We think, and this is why I said I gave you that, all that story first. And as confusing as it was giving you the story before the demo, you think about the possibilities of formal and informal learning attached to this. Not only can I connect, collect these badges for my personal use, but I can now publish them uh, and, and go to, and push them into other locations. And so I said, once you've got your collections, you choose how you want to put them together, you choose if they're public or not. And in this case, I want to share my iMoot badges. Now I'm going to add my hardcore user. I've earned that. I want to publish this. I want to share it. Now, for those of you on Twitter, I'm going to tweet this. So, you know, check out my open badges at. I can customise this, of course. Check out my iMoot 2013 open badges at. I'm going to hash that as well. Big fan of the hashtag and tweet. I can again go straight to Google Plus. I can go straight to Facebook. Again, notice that great thing about the Facebook API, it will even tell me how many people from Facebook have been liking my page. So now that I've done that, if I was to go through now and load up my Twitter feed, there it is. Now I've just tweeted about checking out my open badges. And uh, just to make a point, so I'm skipping around a bit here. I do want to log out of my uh, my bad page here, so just so you can see what you like from an outside person. So um, a person's come and they've seen my uh, my link. They click on it. They're now taken, and they can now see those badges that I earned from iMoot. 
And again, bear in mind, because you can build your own collections, you can build them based around certain skills, you can build them around, this is a job I am going for. These are the badges that relate to that job I'm applying for. Oh, wait a second, um, I don't have a couple of skills. Well, great, we're going to go to an online, to a MOOC, to an online uh, training site and, and find a, a, a location that will actually allow me to pick up that skill. Once I pick up that skill, I can now go through and add that to my backpack and publish that. All of a sudden, things get incredibly exciting. So, what kind of places are we issuing it? Open Badges is still relatively new. It only just came out of beta, to be honest. Moodle, I believe, is the first LMS to have Open Badges built in. Um, so, Carrie, up the top, on my backpack, when I was, went on to the collection screen, there's a little link down the bottom right. I'll go back and do it again. Now, who's issuing these? Well, it's only just come out of beta. But the list of professional names is growing considerably. Um, Codery, um, Codabits, lots of sites that do things like digital training of, of how to write CSS and HTML5. Um, we're seeing, oh, I'm great to see Moodle is now on the list. Um, we're seeing uh, Open University Cloudworks. We're seeing uh, uh, Dallas Museum of Art, the Smithsonian Center, what I mentioned earlier. Uh, Open University, um, EduCourse. Fantastic organisations, and this is just a list of the big names that they're trying to highlight. It is open for anybody to pick up, and that's the awesome thing about it. And so we're hoping, not, I keep saying, we, I'm not part of that community. I, I want to be part of that community. I've fallen in love with Open Badges the past month as I was preparing for iMood. Um, but anybody in the community can, can go through and start adding this to their own systems. Now, if you're an administrator, if you're a developer, I should say, and you want to learn more about this, like Moodle, this is an open source community. So openbadges.org, we had backpack.openbadges with the backpack side. Community.openbadges.org is the site for the community where you can learn, design and code. All the information that you need to know if you're a developer and want to build this into things that you're doing is on this site. If you want to learn about issuing badges, it's all here. It actually links off to their GitHub. Samples um, and existing code are all up here in GitHub for you to be able to grab, see how it works, to fork and make your own versions. Again, this is an open standard using an open source methodology to hopefully get this as widely used as possible, as quickly as possible. And I do believe it will grow quickly because if it's in the learner's interest, it will be in the organisation's interest. And even if I take away from education for a second, Organisations will very quickly start seeing the marketing potential of this. And I hate saying marketing, but you know, dollar drives organisations have to be able to pay their staff, their teachers, you know, and, and get their students. And so if I know that if I'm seeing it, seen as recognised and everybody who, who sees this is going to push them out to their Twitter, to their Facebook, to their Google, that will actually help drive my student numbers forward. And so for, for altruistic reasons and for selfish reasons, I do think that open badges as a standard will be relatively quickly adopted. So um, I'm just going to close that now and go back to my presentation. As I said, I I'm sorry if that was not as well rehearsed as we would have liked. Uh, so sadly, we, we lost our Mozilla uh, presenter last minute. Again, but the air is out of control. Of this, just these things happen. For more information, obviously, as I said, openbadges.org is the website for Open Badges. I urge you to, be, uh, to get more information. Uh, to spread the word, uh, to get 2.5, enable it in your site, investigate it. Um, the Twitter Open Badges account is very responsive. Um, if you've got questions, if you've got queries, they do seem to man that uh, very, very actively. And as I mentioned, I have customised this slide deck, obviously, for, for iMoo, but this slide deck is actually based off one, and hence I've got the Creative Commons licence on this presentation as well. Um, there is a share alike license on this, so um, I will be putting this into the into the space. So if you want to grab this and take it back to your own organisations, please feel free uh, feel free to do so. And then, obviously, more importantly, there's my contact details. So, what next? Well, what next? I mean, apart from throwing questions in, and I'm very keen to answer them if I can. What next is I want you all to sign up for the backpack. Go through, create an account. Go to your uh, 
profile. Again, if you forget how, the simplest way of doing it is to click on your name on the top right of the screen. And then in your profile settings, you'll see badges. And you can then put in the email address you use for your badges to sign up. And then go through and push your first badges up. Put them into your backpack. And then maybe from there, you can share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook. Um, to create a collection, first, you have to have badges first. So you have to push a few badges into the backpack first, Richard. Once you've got a couple of badges there, you can then click on the collections link at the top of the page. Um, I said, and the Mahara stuff, this is where it comes back to the communities catching up. I'm pretty certain, Siggy, there is work being done at the moment to uh, create a, a, a new block to add to a portfolio page for open badges, but I do not think it's available yet. I did try doing some research uh, before this presentation, and as far as I'm aware, it's not there yet, but I know they're working on it. I, I can say that, that there's keen interest to have it in there. It's open standard, Mahara is open source, it, it makes sense. <laughs> Great, look, I'm seeing people putting their backpack links in here already. And again, the great thing about doing it this way is when people visit your backpack page, not only can they see the badges that you have, but it also gives the criteria of how you got it, what, you, what you're recognised for. So I'm just going to jump back a whole bunch of slides. Excuse the, the quick flashing of screens. So I said, this is where this is so exciting. If it was just I put pictures on my website, that's cool. I've still got time left. Do you know what I haven't done? I'm very bad. I've got so far from the first half of this presentation, I want to show you how easy it is to create badges. Does anybody here like to see how we create badges in Moodle? Oh, what is a stupid question? Of course you want to see how we create badges in Moodle. So, let me start doing some sharing again. Creating badges in Moodle is incredibly simple. Give me a second, I'm going to start screen sharing again. Okay, so first of all, as I mentioned, you know, it has to be turned on by administrators. Uh, it is depressing to say that some organisations go, oh, we don't believe in badges and I'll turn it off. If that happens, hit them over the head with a large fish, preferably a large salmon, um, the, uh, knock them into the, uh, into the moat and, and get them convinced to do otherwise. Once we do that, well, let's go through and talk about some courses that I've done. Where I've been building the badges is actually in the lounge. Actually, now let's take a step back. This is the part that I quickly had to pick up the presentation side of things that I wasn't planning on doing. This is a lot less rehearsed than I wanted it to be. Okay, I'm going to the attendees zone. Now, of course, I'm one of the organisers here, so uh, I have uh, editing rights. So here's my course administration block. Under course administration, we now have badges and add a new badge. Adding a badge is very simple. Just give it a name. Let's just do a, a sample here. The name is random badge. Description. This is a random badge of no consequence. <laughs> and then once I've done that, I then just choose a, a picture that obviously represents uh, what that badge is going to be. So let me just quickly grab one here. Um, click and drag. I do love click and drag. And uh, there is my badge of randomness just about to come up. And of course, you know, a name, the organisation, and my contact. As mentioned, Moodle supports expiry. So we've got the expiry date. You know, does this just go on forever? The IMIT badge is going forever. You know, I want you to always be able to recognise it came to IMIT 2013. It's not going to be obsolete when you do 2014. So there we have. But you can turn it to a fixed date that it will go until this time or to a relative date. This badge will last for 30 days or 365 days or 12 months or the <laughs> badge will last for 30 seconds. Um, this is just because it uses a standard Moodle function. So uh, you can go through and set how long you want to last. My badge of randomness will last forever. So I then create the badge. Oh, I've already got a random badge. Random badge two. So once I've created that badge, 
I then have to give a criteria for how it will be awarded. Now, how it's awarded is either by a manual, as in a teacher will give it. Now, sadly, lots of the badges, many of you haven't had updates recently because I actually got some sleep <laughs> a little while ago. But things like the Twitter badge, if you've been posting photos of food or you've been doing your Twitter work, those all have to be manually issued because I don't have a script that does that. So I was going through looking for the people who've been posting via hash search and then manually issuing those badges. They can be done by course completion. You now I want to have a formal one. You've completed this Cert 3, you've completed this diploma course. So great, this badge is issued based on course completion or on activity completion. Um, and again, this is um, really the point, a whole bunch of you said, oh, yeah, Martin mentioned we're going to get a badge in the keynote. Why didn't we get a badge in the keynote? Well, as you all know, Moodle 2.5 is very new. Big Blue Button has been around for a long time. When I did testing of the Big Blue Button integration, everything worked fine, except for one small problem. Because of how 2.5 changed a couple of things, it wasn't recording completion anymore. So I did set up a badge for getting a keynote. And it was going to appear once you completed the activity of Big Blue Button. And because it's a 2.5 only just came out, they hadn't going, oh, Fred's here. Yeah, Fred, oh, I don't want to blame you. I hope you're hearing me. You know, Moodle's new. <laughs> so um, you guys can't be on top of everything. You're, you're focusing on functionality first. But you know, the idea had been that because you would have done the, attended the keynote, you would have got that badge. So that's just an example of activity completion. So you can go through and do this. And the great thing about it, if I choose activity completion, anything inside your course that actually has completion requirements, such as this page, you just tick what has to be done. And here's a cool thing. This has an and or or statement. Remember the slides, not about if or, or then, it's and and, if, and and even. So what happens here is if you've got multiple activities, they have to achieve all the activities or they can do any of those activities, which means if you've got differentiation of tasks, if, you, if you've got four different tasks that all measure that same ability, you can actually put all four ticks, but they only have to do one of those four to get the badge. Now the other thing I'm actually keen to do, I'm actually going to cancel that, because the other thing that many people are going to be really uh, happy with is the other criteria is issued by role. Now when you get issued by role, I just got to, I, I did that a bit too fast for my site to cope with. Let's just do that again. Funnily enough, right now everybody's clicking on things in the background. The site's running a tad bit slower. <laughs> Why aren't you working? Cancel. I love a good demo when it goes to plan. I've been doing this all day, so I'm not sure why it didn't work. So with criteria, I can say mainly issued by role. That's better. And you can choose the roles. Now, again, those of you who know Moodle permissions, you can create custom permissions. Even here, there's a, uh, for facilitators who are helping you in courses, we had a special permission. Uh, for the conference organisers who need an extra level of access to make sure we can help you from a billing perspective, there was that. You know, what you're seeing here is a whole bunch of uh, additional ones. So when you go through and choose whichever role has the ability, you know, the online facilitator and the conference organiser, the cool thing is, again, you can say if any of them, then it gets through, or if all of them, which means that if you need to have a double check process for things such as that, this is a formal recognition where we have to do it manually because we've done it, we've tied it to a real world task rather than a Moodle task. You can make it that both the teach, the non aiding teacher and a teacher both have to do it, award it, for it shows up to the student. What I detected in my testing, because one of the things I really wanted to do was I actually changed it so that the student could issue badges. My idea had been that a student could issue a badge and then a facilitator would just double check it so you guys could issue them to each other and for the popularity contest. I have discovered at the moment that even when I do that, students can't see the editing interface. So I'm going to be putting that in as a bug. So right now, we can't restrict the student level. But I'm hoping we'll be able to eventually, because again, think of the excitement of that. If you could do a peer review functionality by saying all students could issue badges to each other and the teacher would have to cross check. Or if you trust them enough, the students just do it and they're just there. Um, could be quite cool. So issued by role um, ha has some cool little features. And course completion, I won't go and do that one, but course completion suggests exactly what it does. Um, 
message. I'm just going to go to the next option here. It allows me to customise the message that gets sent to the student. Now, many of you have received badges and you would have received a, welcome, uh, so a, a certain message that came with that. You know, you've been awarded the badge, and it inserts the name. More information can be found at insert link. If there are no badges attached to the email, you can download it from my badges. You can change this text. It's not a language pack. It's not something an admin has to do. You can do this just by customising this text and make it as fun or as formal as you want it to be. And the last is recipients. Now to show you that, I actually am now going to go to my lounge space. But it's actually the lounge space that I've, we've had the most fun creating new badges. So again, by coming to this very course, you're going to get a heads up on some of the badges you can be earning. So again, I'm going to my course administration, badges, manage badges. Here are all the badges we've been creating and the number of people they've been issued to. Again, it's not hardcore. I told you that one was hard to get. Only five people with hardcore. Keep calm and move along. You've only gone to one person. So look, let's just quickly talk about the screen. Um, again, I can disable them. You don't have to delete them. I can disable them. Maybe I don't want to use them yet. Um, I'll skip that for a second. One second. I can edit them. I, I've made a typo. I want to change how they're awarded. I can copy them, duplicate them. I want to reuse that badge, but for a slightly different purpose. And of course, delete. But this middle one here is award. This is used if you are having one manually issued. Awarding a badge, and the blogomatic was one of them. I, I created one for people who've been blogging. Now, in fact, let me see if I can do a live sample of this. I'm going to get the new tab. I'm going to go through and check the blog and see if anybody's been blogging that hasn't already got a badge. Uh, John Igler and Kim have both been blogging. Do they have badges yet? Um, John does not have a badge. Fantastic. So, because he's been blogging, he's going to earn a badge. So, um, I can just do a search. There he is. Award badge. That's it. <laughs> That's how difficult it is to issue a badge manually. Um, you just go searching for the name out of a participant and you can issue them. Now the bad news is because I was preparing for this presentation and dare I say it had a couple of hours of sleep, I am not up to date on the manual badge issuing. So those of you who've been saying I've been twittering, I posted up photos, um, you know, I, I took a picture of my food, I you know, can't give out all the reasons, you guys have to discover some of them. Um, I will be catching up on some of the manual badge issuing um, through here. Uh, by the way, feel free, if you think that you've uh, missed out, uh, do feel free to send me a private message or post on the forums and I'll, I'll try and update to make sure you're getting your badges. Uh, by the way, just tweeting once does not get you a Twitter Twitterati badge. Just Facebooking once. You know, you have, badges have some effort, people. I don't want to hear complaints about, oh, I put one post on Twitter and wondering why I didn't get a badge. Nah, the fun is the mystery. I do promise you it's not excessive and it's not about marketing. So feel free. You'll just have to figure out the combination or or maybe collaborate with people who've already got one. Um, Vinny has asked me to do a badge issuer's badge. I think that's a good idea. We need a badge issuer. If you've been making badges, we've created a badge for badge badging. I'll, I'm confusing myself. Um, the other thing you have to be aware of is, of course, the more badges we're making, the more that my poor staff have to do to issue them. So um, we'll, keep a, we'll keep a hold on it. But uh, I just want to show you that the interface for creating these badges is very simple. So that's it. Presentation done. Um, I hope now you've got excited. You now see why Badges is not just about your Moodle. And yes, we've seen engagement happen by it. We've seen collaboration happening through it. And I'm, I'm excited about that. That in itself made it worth its effort. But um, the fact also that your students can take these and publish them and share them with other organisations and that other organisations that have got badges from, they can take and share back with you for things such as RPL. means that we can now go through and, uh, and create an environment where, as I said on that earlier slide, it, it's actually an achievement. And the outcomes are, yes, it opens up new job opportunities. People see the skills that I have. And not that I'm saying I have them, but recognition that I've earned them. They can go through and uh, open up new opportunities for learning because I realise I don't have a skill, I'm going to go through and find a place I can get a badge for that skill. So yeah, this is where that excitement kicks in.
All right. Well, look, that is it. We have time before the next session. If you are a presenter, please go to your course, create an activity. Give people badges for attending your sessions. I, I do hate that this had to be so far late in the program. We originally put it so late in the program because of trying to get our other speaker in. And again, please don't blame Mozilla. It, it, it's not their fault. Um, it's, as you know, things just happen sometimes last minute. Um, what I would also like to encourage you to do is make sure you Twitter. I'm going to put the handle in here. If you are a Twitter person, send a tweet to the Open Badges people. Let them know, you know, did you come to iMoon? Do you like badges? Are you using them? Give them feedback. They're extremely proactive on the Twitter area. Um, and especially if you're starting to use them, you're discovering them, become part of that community. Twitter's the first win if you're a Twitter person. Otherwise, go to the community.openbadges.org site and become part of that. But I'm very keen for them to know that even though they couldn't make it, sadly, to our session, if you are a Twitter person, let them know that you came here. Did you like the presentation I gave? Did I miss something? Um, is there something that I wasn't clear on? Well, again, they'll be able to answer those kinds of questions for you. And if you're part of other projects, things like Mahara, contact the Mahara team. Say, you know, when is this coming? Will you have one? Um, if you're using uh, sites uh, for other online education, Pebblepad or Blackboard or anything like that, contact them because, again, open standards are, are driven by usually a, a want, a need. It's working, Mahara. Hey. All right. So that's the end. Your job until the next session is to create your backpack. Go and see if you can earn some badges. Again, there was a link we put in the chat earlier about places that issue badges. Some of them are rather really easy to get. In fact, I should have mentioned, uh, give me one second, I'm going to uh, put another link into chat. Once you've got your backpack, there actually is a place you can go to quickly earn a couple of badges from Mozilla itself. Um, I just have to remember where that was. Give me five seconds, I'll be able to tell you where to get it. I think it's Badges 101. Sorry, again, you know, I'd like to say I'm more prepared, but I'm not more prepared. Um, I think there's a bit Badges 101 site that you can quickly earn a, a quick badge. Look, I'll find that link. I won't babble onto my phone. Get your backpack set up, get a couple of badges, push your iMoot badges up into your backpack. Share them on, on Twitter, on, on, on LinkedIn, on, on Google+, Plus, places that you want people to see what you've been doing. And in short, experiment, play, and have fun. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming and attending and in whatever godforsaken or, or logical hour that it might have to be in your part of the world. And uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, have to answer more questions. Feel free to use your microphones too if you wish. Uh, these slides will be in my course space. They said they literally were just finished five minutes before I came in here. I will upload these slides as a PDF uh, into the session space uh, once we're done. Um, if you want to share your links, by the way, use the forum that I put in here uh, in the session space. So if you actually want to create your first test but don't want to publish it to the world, maybe it just appears here, um, feel free to use the, the forum here uh, in this session space to, to publish your link and then people can say, yes, it worked or it didn't. Uh, that might be a good way of playing with it as well before you go into the outside world and, 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 and make things extra public.